Welcome to Y Lab, the makerspace located in the basement workshops of the historic David Dunlap Observatory in Richmond Hill, Ontario, Canada. So of course there's snow on the picture. What did you expect? Palm trees? So this is lesson two in our Canadian amateur radio training series, where we'll cover ground, power, and resistors. This is one of the easier sections, so go for 95% on the quiz, because if you get high marks on the easy sections, you'll have an easier time on the tough sections. So what is ground? Well, we hear about it in expressions. You need a good grounding, finding common ground, and also, like some of us, not grounded in reality. There are four reasons for ground. One, it's a reference point. It's your zero volt reference point. And you could have negative or positive uh, around that reference point. It's also where power and current want to go. If there's a short circuit or something wrong with your equipment, if you've got a connection to ground, that's where it will go instead of through you, the meat sack. So it's what you and equipment need for safety. That can happen because of surges, failure in equipment. You don't want that power to go through you. And the reverse side of it is you can cause damage to the equipment. The static electricity you carry can wreck things. And finally, it's an active part of antenna and transmission. As we'll learn in the lessons, not all the power you transmit will go out to the antenna, especially if the antenna is not a good match for your frequency and your radio. So you can be sending a lot, a lot of power. Some of it can go out the antenna, and some of it will bounce back into your radio equipment looking for ground, and if you don't have it, looking for you. So ground is safety. The electricity needs a place to go. So if you look at the top left picture, you know, we've got a bird sitting on the power lines and it doesn't have a problem because it's not connected to ground. On the other hand, if you touch that wire and your feet are on the ground, you're a cooked meat sack. Look at other places. We've got uh, on the right side, uh, if somebody is connected to ground and standing on ground, there's no path because both of your connection points are on the ground. And then the bottom left, we've got both examples together where one person in the same situation, because their contact is at one point, will get shocked and the other won't. It's now ground as a reference point. Okay. This is the main use. So it's a zero volt reference. Uh, we generally consider it the minus terminal on a battery on circuits. And if you look at these three circuits, uh, where we've got a power supply on one side, and we've drawn it as a, a battery on the left, a 10 volt battery, we've drawn it as a, an alternating current power supply on the right with a circle or in the middle. Uh, we can see it looks like the first one doesn't have ground, the second one has one ground point, and the last one has two ground points. For most circuits, simple circuits without a lot of power, these are pretty much equivalent. Uh, we, you know, the, the electrical engineers will quibble at me about this, but when we look at this simply, it's pretty much the same. But there is a critical difference between them. And that difference is you, the meat sack. So imagine you're holding one of those circuits on the top line and something shorts out. Okay? Your hand to ground, your hand is now the ground connection. And power will take the easiest route to ground. And without a direct ground connection for your radio, that route's going to be through you, the meat sack. So powers, ground's required for higher power devices. On a small battery-operated device, you know, your, uh, your iPod, your phone, things like that, uh, a flashlight, it's not going to make a difference because we're not dealing with a lot of power. So on those circuits, you tend not to see grounding. But when we're dealing with high-power circuits on the diagrams, things like that, you really want that ground there. Let's give you a real-world example. 
So a radio or an appliance has a metal case. An internal component failure causes a short, uh, and that means a live wire is touching the case. So is the case connected to ground? If it is, yeah, the power will flow to the ground and maybe even blow a fuse. If it isn't connected to ground, actually nothing happens if you leave it alone because there's nowhere for the power to go. But then you, the meat sack, walks up and touches the case. Mmm, tasty fried meat sack. Um, and uh, I won't say if I've done this before. Now back to our basic circuit. Think of voltage as a pump creating pressure. And that's the potential difference. Okay, so the pressure, how hard you're pressing. Um, the current is how much is flowing through. So the voltage, which uh, as we mentioned in some of our intro slides, is also referred as electromotive force or E. Um, that's the amount of pressure. Uh, think of a pressure washer. If you use a hose, a garden hose, the water spraying out nicely. If you hook it up to a pressure washer, it's spraying out a lot harder. It's the same amount of water, so we get the same amount of current, but one of them's adding a lot more pressure or a lot more voltage, and that's the fundamental difference. Then the next part we have is for the power to get through, how much resistance in there. So think of that like the size of a pipe. If you look at the picture on the right, you know, less resistance will allow more current to flow through and more resistance will restrict it. So let's give you some more resistance analogies. So if we've got a pump in the top left corner, it's pumping water through, uh, it can be slowed by a series of smaller pipes which act like resistances. Okay. Now, if we look on the right, we've got our 0 volts, our 12 volts on the battery. Uh, we've got current flowing through, and we've got a couple of resistors. So it's pretty much the same as the diagram on the left. That's called an analog. Uh, and actually, in engineering, they will, will do a lot of analogs like that between technologies. Uh, but it's still a useless example. Okay? Uh, so let's look at a couple more examples that are closer to the real world. Uh, the bottom left, I've got a water pump. So that's like my battery providing the pressure, the electromotive force, the voltage. And it's going to go through a sand filter. So that sand filter is going to impede the flow of water, but it's going to do something useful. Uh, so we have it there, but it's acting like a resistance. Uh, or if we have getting a little more useful, uh, we've got a, an extremely powerful Lego engine. Uh, acting as a pump. Uh, so it's pumping water through and it's going to a water wheel that's maybe turning, oh, I don't know, a hundred year old flour mill. So again, that's going to be slowing down the flow and acting as a resistance. So back to our basic circuit. Voltage is a pump creating the pressure or a potential difference. Current is how much is flowing through. And power is the combination of the two. Voltage times current. And we'll see that time and time again. It's one of the two big math formulas you're going to have to remember. Uh, but the power is what really dictates the danger. It's the combination of voltage and current. And if you think of static electricity, a static electricity shock is about 10,000 volts, but it doesn't have much current, hardly any at all. And so that little shock hits the back of your neck and goes nowhere. You feel it on the skin, but there's not enough current, there's not enough of it to do a flow through your body. Uh, so think of things like a river. A slow moving river has lots and lots of current, but very little potential change. Hey, you can go, you can swim in there, you can go against the current, you can canoe up river and you're fine. Lots and lots of power, but very low pressure, low voltage. 
Now, if we suddenly get to a waterfall, then we get a much bigger potential difference for the same current, and uh, you don't want your canoe to be on there. So then we get the resistances. So resistances in a circuit are used for all kinds of things. It can be used to regulate the voltage, stuff like that. And um, here we've got a resistance they can have different sizes and they can actually have the same value. Now these have different color codes. We'll get into that. Uh, so they probably got different resistances, but they could all have the same color codes and be the same sizes. Those color codes, as you'll learn, is uh, how we identify the resistance value. The difference is how much power they can handle. So the current again, or the power, voltage time current is critical and so for components they have to be sized for the amount of power going through not just the voltage okay. so what's a resistor well it's something used to make silly circuit diagrams in high school that really serve no use okay. now it could also be a representation of a full circuit for calculation purposes so uh, your whole radio rig could be described by one resistor. It's a useful component for controlling how much current and flower flow through, and they're usually made of carbon. So the resistor we talk about R, the resistance, the capacity of it, and it's measured in ohms. Okay, so again, to review, it restricts current. You think of it as a hose or a pipe. Generally, the smaller diameter, the more resistance. And where does that power go? If the current's flowing through it, it's dissipating that power as heat. And so it will absolutely have a max power rating because heat tends to melt things. If you go above its power rating, too much voltage and current, remember the combination of the two, uh, you will melt the thing. Now, the second big formula we have is Ohm's Law, where voltage or electromotive force uh, is equal to the current times the resistance. Now, that formula will be flipped around and reversed to things like V equals, or I equals V over R. If you remember your basic math, you can move around the factors like that. So if you know two of the factors, you can calculate the other one. Okay, so again, V is voltage, think of it as pressure, and I is current, and the more pressure you put on, the more current will flow through. Now, how do we read the value of a resistor? So, these stripes on the resistors are absolutely standard. The first three gives you the value of the resistor. And the last one gives you the tolerance or the precision. Now, here's the good news for the test. So each color responds to a number. You don't need to memorize it for the test. The test will say, okay, we've got gray and gray is eight and we've got red and red is two and we've got brown and brown is one. So what does that mean? Well, the first two digits, gray and red, eight, two, that's the first two digits of the value of the resistor. The third digit is the number of zeros. So brown is one. So we've got eight, two, and we've got one zero after that. So it's an 820 ohm resistor. The value on the right is the tolerance. So these three you have to remember. Gold is plus or minus 5%. Silver is plus or minus 10%. And if there's nothing, it's plus or minus 20%. So that's it. First digit, second digit, the third stripe is number of zeros. The last one is the tolerance. And the only ones you really have to remember are what the positions mean and the three tolerance values. When you put resistors together, if you line them up end to end, that's called series. So think of it as a water pipe where you're lining up 
you're thinning up the pipe for longer and longer. That's going to create a lot more resistance, restrict the flow. So when they're in series, they're all lined up. You just add up the values. So if I have R1, R2, R3, all uh, 100 ohms, my total resistance is going to be 300 ohms. In parallel, think of I've got a water tower at the top and I've got water flowing down. Now, if I have one pipe, it's going to flow slow. But if I put three pipes the same size, it's going to flow three times as fast. So that formula is a little more complicated. Uh, it's one over the resist. So the total resistance is one over the first resistance plus one over the second resistance. You can see the calculation here. Um, but a general rule of thumb for the test they tend to give you the same resistor values. So if you've got 200 ohm resistors, you're actually going to be cutting your resistance in half because you're doubling the flow. So 200 ohm resistors will give you 50 ohm resistance. Three 100 ohm resistors will you know, increase your flow three times. So now your resistance will be a third of what it was. So you know, three 100 ohm resistors uh, in parallel will actually give you uh, one third of the value, 33 ohms of resistance. Okay. How much power is going through my circuit? So I've got a 10 volt battery, I've got a 5 ohm, 5 ohm resistor. How much power is going through? Well, remember our other formula power is voltage times current. Always remember, you have to have the two of them for power. Just one is meaningless. Okay? And power is measured in watts. So, first thing we need to do is get our current. We know the voltage. We need current to measure power, right? P equals V times I. So, if we take Ohm's law, V equals I times R, uh, we just move... Uh, the resistance to the other side, so I is V over R. So our current is 10 over 5. And that's 2. Multiply that by the voltage, 10 times 2, we've got 20 watts. Now, down below here, we've made it a little more complicated where we stuffed it all into one equation. Okay? Often it's easier to just calculate the current or calculate the voltage, the one that's missing, and then go back to your base equation. Okay, we talk about voltage drop across components. So we've got a 10 volt power supply going through two 5 ohm resistors in series. So here's our total resistance. Two 5 ohm resistors in series, we add them up, we've got 10 ohms. Now our current, again going back to Ohm's law, is V is I times R. Uh, changing the factor from one side to the other. We've got I is V over R, so that's 10 volts over 10 ohms, so we've got 1 amp of current. The voltage across that resistor, we go back to Ohm's law again. We've got V equals I times R, so we know we have 1 amp of current flowing through the circuit. It's going across a 5 ohm resistor, so I times R is 1 times 5, it's 5 volts. And since the other resistor is the same value, 5 ohms, it will have exactly the same voltage across it. And uh, here's a general rule for electricity. The total voltage drops across components is the same as the voltage powering the circuit. So we start with a 10 volt power supply. We get a 5 volt drop through the first resistor and a 5 volt drop through the second resistor. So if I say drop, you know, think minus. And so 10 volts in the power supply, minus 5 on the first one, minus 5 on the second one, and our total voltage across the circuit goes back to zero. Let's talk about the current flow. OK, 
Okay, we've got parallel and serial. So in series, like water, current flows the same through all the components. So, you know, the current's coming out of the battery, it's going back in in the loop. So, of course, it, it, it can't be different through the components. But if we have the resistors in parallel, the flow is going to be th spread through the components. And again, think of water flowing through pipes. So if I've got three pipes going down from my water tower, the total current is going to be the adding up the current flow through each of the pipes or each of the branches. So think about this. In parallel, if I've got three pipes or three resistors where a current flowing through, the total resistance is always less than the smallest resistance. Because if I take my smallest resistance on there, you know, it alone would have a certain amount of flow. But if I'm now adding other pipes coming down from the water tower, there's even more water going through, so there's less resistance than just the smallest one on there. Another component is the diode. The diode's a one-way valve for current. Okay? So it's one-way vo voltage control. Think of it like a valve that only allows the water through one way. So it only allows current through one way. Okay. Um, so diode is an LED, and LED is a light-emitting diode. If you were to hook up a diode the wrong way, you would get no light out of it because it's going to block the current flow. You know you've got it the right way when you see it lighting up. Okay. Now, current flows in the directions of the arrow in the diode symbol. So if you look at the symbol at the top of the diagrams, uh, top left diagram, uh, that's the symbol for a diode, the triangle and the little bar in front of it. And that shows you which way the current's going to flow. Okay, so it flows from anode to cathode, the power. Anode being the positive, cathode being the negative on the battery or on the diode. Okay. I like to remember anode to cathode by AC. Even though AC fluctuates back and forth, uh, it helps me remember that anode, the current goes from anode to cathode. So for the test, here's the resistor stuff you need to remember. Two resistors in series, double your resistance. Two resistors in parallel, half the resistance. Again, it's like water flowing through two pipes instead of one. Okay. If we have in parallel three resistors of the same value, your total resistance now will be the resistance value over three. If you have ten resistors of the same value all in parallel, the total resistance will be the value of the resistance divided by ten. So just remembering these two things will help you in the test. Okay. Now, here's another trick. So I've got 100 ohm. I need 100 ohms of resistance. Do I use 100 ohm resistor or two 200 ohm resistors in parallel? Well, you know, two 200 ohm resistors in parallel, based on our formulas and stuff, is 100 ohms. Remember, they're in parallel, so we cut the value in half. It's two of them, or, you know, if it was three, we'd cut it in a third. But if all the resistors are rated for a quarter watt, hey, if we have the current flowing through two resistors, we can handle double the power with two of them in parallel. Okay, so you'll get questions like that. Is it better to use one or two in parallel? Hey, put them in parallel, we get double the power through. Remember those color bands. The first and second are the first and second digits of the value. The third is the number of zeros to append. And on the opposite side, the stripe is the tolerance, gold 5%, silver 10%, and if there's no band, 20%. And that simple stuff will get you through all the resistance questions on the test. Now, conductors and insulators. You know, conductors inside your wiring in your house, 
metal is best and precious metals are absolutely the best and gold is better than silver is better than copper and copper is better than aluminum the opposite side what we put around the wire so we don't get shocks and cook the meat sacks uh, glass porcelain plastic are all great insulators air is a great insulator too but it just doesn't stop you from putting your hand on a live wire and both conductors and insulators are affected by temperature. Okay, so now go ahead, take quiz number two. Have a calculator handy. Uh, the links are in the comments section below to the test and on our main page for uh, this course series. And quiz two is also one of the easier ones. So work it until you get 95% accuracy so that uh, you can take it easier on some of the tougher sections. Comment, maybe we'll get around to reviewing them and post them. And uh, good luck on the next quiz.